Hey, hello everyone and welcome to what is, in theory, the first technical video of this channel. As I explained in my intro video, I've been working on my Spanish YouTube channel for six years and well, I decided it was time to move on and also start creating some English content. And to be honest, I think this is a very good uh, video to start so people can get an idea of what my channel is all about. It's probably not going to be seen by anyone because, uh, you know, it's a new channel and there is not anything or being promoted anywhere. However, the thing is that this morning I woke up and I read a tweet made by Alex Battaglia from Digital Foundry, which is a friend of mine, saying that he uh, couldn't understand the resistance uh, for ray tracing in the PC space, right? Like, um, every time you mention ray tracing, it's always discarded, it's always uh, considered a gimmick or um, people tend to say, you know, it's only for uh, rich people because uh, apparently you need something like uh, 2080 Ti, uh, 2080, 3080 or the next uh, 4090 to be able to uh, play games with ray tracing, which um, I think this is fueled by the fact that many big tech channels tend to discard ray tracing as, you know, something that will take too much of um, performance. But I find I find this odd and, and not true in the uh, in the strict sense because when they when they kind of test this stuff they just turn everything on and they expect it to you know be from one uh, to to not lose too much performance which is odd to me because obviously you need to adapt but you know if you have some GPU space to spare, why not use it to improve the graphics? You don't need to always turn every single ray trace option on. You will have to select and choose your options. But this notion that ray tracing is something that is not good or that is you need like you know to spend a lot of money to play is 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 not entirely true. So today video, what I wanted to do was just to take one of the lowest array tracing cards available from NVIDIA, which is the 2066 gigabytes. And I know the 3050 is uh, even lower in terms of ray tracing, but this is the one I have. And also it's only six gig of VRAM, which is also very important when it comes to ray tracing. The more VRAM you have, the better. So I wanted to use this card just to prove that you can play with ray tracing at good quality and, you know, not having to sacrifice sacrifice everything and I understand there is lots of people out there that prefer performance they want 120 FPS 200 FPS and that's great and you know yes if you you are you're looking for that sort of performance you have either two options which is to lower everything you can in especially ray tracing or to be at the top of the line in graphic cards when it comes to to that for example, a 4090 if you want to play a 4K 120 FPS uh, with ray tracing on. But if you are like me and you prefer graphic fidelity over frame rate or over resolution, then you can see that you can get a very uh, a respectable performance from lower end cards like the 2060. And I call it lower end in terms of ray tracing, okay? So to me, the uh, 2060 has always been a 1080p car, okay? So today we're going to push it beyond what is normal or comfortable, including with the ray tracing. So that means I'm going to use the car mostly at 1440p. And then after we check everything, I am going to uh, come with some conclusions. So I want to show you first all my benchmarks. And then after we see them, we watch them, I am going to tell you what I think about all of this. Uh, I'm starting with a recent patch that was released for the original Quake that makes the game completely path trace as far as I understand. And as you can see in the frame rate and frame time graph, it's not losing a bit. It's perfect. You are playing with a 2060 on a, a path trace game completely locked at 60 frames per second. And the image quality because of the type of game looks amazing even with the LSS performing active. So yeah, this is not the most demanding game we're going to be testing today, but I think it's a very good opportunity to see how the, uh, this car is going to behave with different types of games. In this case, well, you can see, honestly, um, I love Quake and honestly, this patch is really, really good. So give it a chance besides the whole thing we're talking, which is ray tracing. I think this patch is very, very good.
jump into a more demanding game and probably the one that had the worst performance in today's video is uh, uh, Sony's Spider-Man. In this case, well, we have, you know, 4040p and I am using the Insomnia uh, reconstruction technique in dynamic mode because I think is the, the most stable of them all just to get the frame rate I'm looking for. But however, you can see that the game goes as lower as 49, 48 frames per second, which, you know, I still think is very good considering that even with now, ray tracing the game is not very stable so I'm not quite sure what's going on there maybe the amount of VRAM is not enough I'm not sure but I think it's a very good result anyways and you can consider that we're testing this at 1440p and probably we could just go as low as 1080p or lock the frame rate to 40 on a VRR monitor or just a monitor that will allow you that and you should have a very stable presentation now Dying Light 2, which I think is a game that looks phenomenal and with the ray tracing option it's very heavy. However, in this case we are using the preset, not the Ultra RT preset, but the previous one which is just the RT preset. And I have to say I'm very surprised with the performance of this car because everything considered. This is 1440p, yes it's DLSS performance but it still looks very good and we're getting, you know, RT in close to um, 60 FPS, you know, like half percent of 50% uh, of the time. However, on during cinematics, yes, it's a, it goes a little bit low, but you know, you can experiment maybe lower resolution or maybe change some options and probably get a stable at 60. My point is that I believe that this 26 is, show, is still showing how good you can play with ray tracing on and still have an amazing gaming experience. And that's what my point is in this video. Now, Guardians of the Galaxy is a game I love. I have to say, I beat this game and man, I love from the very first moment. And graphically, it's a very, very good and nice game. You know, very colorful and um, very complex game with a lot of colors and lights and everything going on around. And I was able to play this with DLS in balance, not even performance at 1440p with RT on in high mode, which is the middle, which I think the normal RT, I don't know, they use these confusing names, but the preset is the very high one for the rasterization part. So, and as you can see, the game is just a flat 60 perfect all the time. Uh, there is probably points where it can get maybe a um, little more under 60. I'm not sure. We see that the graphic cards is still, you know, underused. So we have headroom there in any case. So this is another example of how you can get a very good experience at 60 FPS with ray tracing enabled. Now, Doom Eternal, probably one of the most optimized games of the last 20 years, not counting Forza Horizon 5. And here we have the game with ray tracing on, not DLSS, but dynamic resolution scaling active. And the game is running, from my point of view, very, very good. It's true that by the end of this test, you're going to see that it goes lower than 60 and around 50 something, but that's maybe something we can solve using uh, DLSS together with dynamic resolution scaling just to you know iron out those moments where it goes under 60. Uh, this game probably also could go over 60 but the thing is that I'm limiting uh, the frame rate to 60 just to have that stable line there so we can see that the game is still running very good and you know you have a very good experience even with ray tracing on even though this game is not particularly heavy on ray tracing this is still an option you can have and it will make the game look better. And the last game I'm going to be testing today is Cyberpunk 2077. And as you know, this is a very heavy game when it comes to ray tracing. And yes, you cannot activate every single option there is for ray tracing using the 2060, but you can activate both shadow options and still get a very stable 60 FPS performance. As you can see here, we're using medium quality and the game is running flawlessly. If you will, if you want to use more ray tracing options, you can activate, for example, um, reflections, which looks amazing in this game, and just go to 30 FPS or lower the resolution to 1080p and keep the DLSS in balanced mode. So as you can see, you have to play with this, but ray tracing is not this boogeyman or sort of weird option that nobody can use unless you have 3080. You end up having a much nicer look game uh, if you know how to play with everything that these new games offer you. 
So after watching all the benchmarks, you can see that ray tracing even on a 2060 is possible and at a very good quality. It's true, you have to take advantage of every options the developers are giving at you, like the LSS, and many people consider that to be fake resolution, but why does it matter if the end result is good? What important is what your eyes see, not what your technical knowledge allows you to know. If somebody didn't tell you that was a 1440p or a 1080p or a 4K image, you probably wouldn't notice. So I think that's the important thing, is the perceived resolution, the perceived quality of the image and not the actual quality of the image. Uh, I will say, for example, that a Mario 64 or 4K will not look as good as Cyberpunk and 1080p. So at the end of the day, it's not about the pixel, but the quality of the pixels. So you have to use every resource you have, especially with this, let's call it low end car in terms of ray tracing. But as you can see, you can enjoy ray tracing. You can activate ray tracing. You can use it even with low end cars and give that game that extra boost to look better. And I understand many people won't want to sacrifice FPS. Well, and that's okay, you know, to each their own. My point is that if you are like me and you prefer graphic fidelity over performance, for example, I would play, I would rather play at 1440 feet, for, for, I would rather play at 1440p 60 FPS with ray tracing than at 4K 120 without. And there is nothing wrong with that or nothing wrong with choosing one or the other. But the thing is, you have the option. And that's the good thing about PC is that you can tailor your experience to what you want and what you desire things that you can do mostly on consoles because you're very limited in this case you can play with the options as we saw I activated cyberpunk uh, shadows and we can play at 60 fps but maybe you don't care and you want to activate the, like the um, global illumination reflections and you're willing to play at 30 fps you can do that and you will be able to do it with a 2060 because I have tested and it is possible so at the end of the day, the important thing here is that the ray tracing is not this boogeyman that is coming for you and to destroy your graphic card, or take away all your FPS, because it's not true. Of course, if you want to play with a, you know, a 4K ray tracing, 120 FPS, you will need a 4090, a 3090 Ti. But if you, you know, you, you have to play with what you have. And, you know, for me, the 2060, as I said, it's a 1080p card. So if you are using a what is logically a 1080p card, obviously for ray tracing, well, you have to adjust yourself. Unfortunately, it's the reality, but I just don't think that there is, you know, the, there is this belief by big channels that you, ray tracing is not worth it. And I, I don't think that's true. To me, ray tracing is very much worth it. It's, in some games, maybe not. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for example, I don't think the shadows add too much to the overall game, like mostly nothing. But in Control, in Cyberpunk, and all the games I chose to choose to, to show today, you can see there is a quite a big difference in terms of quality. And you can still get a very good performance out of your video card. And that's what I wanted to show because there seems to be this notion out there and this misinformation that ray tracing is not worth it unless you have the, the greatest and the latest to be able to play games. And this is what my channel is about and what I like to show to everyone that you can play at any level and with different quality and still have a great experience. Uh, you know, I, I hate this fact that big channels seem to only turn on ray tracing and it goes down half your frame rate though this is this is doesn't bother and then they make videos saying that ultra settings are ridiculous right like okay so why do you think that you ray tracing is only about turning it on and just killing your fps you you can play with different options to you know lose some of those fps but then recover them using something like dlss and at the end of the day you still have a very rounded package some games in medium quality with ray tracing will look better than those games at ultra quality without ray tracing so you have to play with those options um well my video it started as you know thinking about this thing that alex said on twitter and i see constantly this resistance this misinformation about ray tracing that you know I, I don't really understand i've been loving the fact i was at the gamescom 2018 presentation for the rtx 2000 that's where i met the digital foundry team and you know i, I was able to be there and 
from the first moment I saw that's the future. That's something I, I I will love and I like. And it took a while for them to uh, you know to games to start be released. And now you know games are here. So guys, enjoy your ray tracing. You don't have to have the greatest and the latest. Just be smart about it. As you can see, as you saw in the video, you can play with very good quality with ray tracing on even on the 2060. I hope you like this video and if that's so, please subscribe to the channel. I'm starting my English channel, so it will really help me to get up there, you know, to put uh, every video, to make more of them as often as possible. So I will really appreciate a like, a subscribe, and any comment you can do to, for me to improve the channel and your suggestion, I will take it to heart. So please leave them in the comments. Uh, I know I'm not very fluent at the moment, but I don't know why. I live in the UK. I speak English every day. I, you know, I live in Oxford and you know how English is over here. But for some reason, making videos in English is a little bit, I don't know, I'm still not used to. So it, I, I can, it can take a while. So I hope you have patience with me, but uh, I'm really um, hoping to bring you very good and quality content about everything tech. See you on the next video.